Welcome back to the News Hour, Tony's last News Hour. He has anchored our 6 o'clock newscast for more than three decades. He's supported charities, too many to mention. He has won numerous awards, including a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Jack Webster Foundation and a place in the Canadian Broadcast Hall of Fame. Now, I know Tony probably won't like the phrase, end of an era, but it is. So we had to put together a look at his outstanding career and a few things you might not know about the anchor you've been watching all these years. Tony, could you come to the set now? It's time to go. All right. Every night, Brian Smalley, our floor director, calls Tony Parsons to the set. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> It's a little joke between the two of them, and it's been that way for years. But today is very different, because this is Tony's last news hour. Last one. How are you holding up? I'm okay. So far? Don't say anything sad or gloomy, or a grown man will cry on live television. <laughs> Gentlemen, we haven't really... 34 years, seven premiers, eight prime ministers, and it all comes down to this. The most watched and trusted face in the province is leaving the big chair at Global BC. No, look at this, the fruits of Johnny. But before he goes, he sat down with me for lunch and a frank discussion about Tony the news anchor, whom everyone knows, and Tony the man, who is a very private person and shy, but obviously not too shy to choose a very public career. I don't know what I would have done if I didn't do what I do now. I, I, I wanted to be a lawyer originally, but I got steered into being a journalist. Tony Parsonage was born in England just as World War II was heating up. His British father was very strict and away a lot. His Italian mother raised their six children mostly on her own. They moved to small-town Ontario after the war, and that's where Tony got a radio job and his new last name, Parsons, from a boss who liked short names. His dad, though, wasn't happy about Tony's choice of career. Toward the end of his life, um, we became friends again, and uh, he never admitted to me that he thought I was successful in what I did because he didn't think it was a job, because I didn't use my hands. This is the News Hour. But his job was very real to viewers of the News Hour. Here is Tony Parsons. Good evening, BC Teachers. Tony came on board in 1975 as the newscast was gathering steam and viewers on its climb to number one. BCTV was the new kid on the block in 1960. The number one newscast when the station went on the air was CBS News with Walter Cronkite. The flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Yes, British Columbians turned to CBS at supper time. No one else, including BCTV, came close for obvious reasons. So if there's an item that uh, you'd like to know more about, please call us at Channel 8 TV News. The News Hour with Tony Parsons. But 15 years later, the station that put pictures first went after original stories and always went for the latest technology, found the anchor that British Columbians wanted to watch. The News Hour with Tony Parsons. Uh, Tony had two things. One was he had uh, an excellent voice and a good announcing capability. But he also had a, a calmness, a demeanor that commanded attention. And the most meaningful news you can get. Well, it's all over. It's been one long party here. For the past Expo five might have been over, but Tony's career just kept right on going. He had one of the best jobs in broadcasting, making very good money in a province he loved. But he realized one night crossing the Lions Gate Bridge that he wasn't happy. Nothing mattered. Something was wrong. And eventually, he spoke to his doctor. And they asked the inevitable question, have you ever thought about committing suicide? Well, I had. I, uh, yeah, really, yeah, Tony? Yeah, I had. I, you know, as odd as that may sound, you think, you know, if I'm not enjoying what I've got now, then there's no point in going on. Okay. Fortunately, Tony pulled out of his depression and started to enjoy life again. And, of course, his dog, Charlie, helped. Can you move just a little bit? But while his life on the air was very orderly, his life off the air, not so neat. In fact, he calls his former self a cad. 
I've been, I've had multiple marriages, and sometimes I was the one to blame, and, and I can only say that I think I could be a very difficult person to live with, because I'm moody and um, I withdraw. I'm a very inward kind of person, and I think that worked against me over, the, over time with, in relationships. I'm fortunate now that I'm in one that, you know, nothing can possibly break down. He said in the book that he was a cad. Oh, yes. Yes, I heard about that. He's not a cad. He's not. He's a lovely, lovely man. Looking good. Yes, Tony and his wife Tammy are having the time of their lives. Tammy's already retired. She managed golf courses for a living. And Tony's been semi-retired for a few years now. So, what to do? How about buy into a junior B hockey team, the Grandview Steelers? Are you making money? I never ask. <laughs> I haven't got a check yet, so maybe that's, that's a bad sign. Over the years, we've known Tony as a golfer. <laughs> but he did play hockey as a kid, calls himself an ankle skater. And he played for the station team, the BCTV Tubes, and one game he will never forget. I scored a goal, a memorable goal it yes, was, too. Yes. The only uh, unfortunate thing was it was on my own team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and did we mention Tony's also bought into a restaurant, an Italian restaurant, of course. It's called The Poor Italian in East Vancouver. Light seasoning on the grill here. Chef Johnny Peaky, formerly of Umberto's, has just opened this restaurant, and already it's making a name for itself. Tony is excited about this new venture, but more than a little nostalgic about his life in the news. Very good. Looks to I'll miss, you know, being with you guys every night at six. I'll miss it enormously. Um, and we'll miss you. Well, you know, the time has come. Thanks to everyone who's, who's been so loyal over the years. Uh, I don't think there's a better, um, more fun thing to do than what you and I do. I just, uh, you know, I love what I do. I look forward every day to the 6 o'clock show, and I thoroughly enjoy it. Um, you know, I think I was so lucky. Thank you, Bernie. That's tonight's news hour. Good night. Such a handsome man. Now, we have talked to people on the street, but if you would like to post your own message to Tony on our website, all you need to do is go to globaltvbc.com, and we will be back in just a moment. I went to Squire, actually. I said, you know, I have to give this speech. I have to speak for eight to ten minutes. Do you have any advice? And he said, yeah, yeah why don't you start out with something like, does this gown make me look fat? What is it about him as an anchor? Honest. Seems honest. Yeah. Seems like he's telling us what's true. Yeah. You know, he's very forthright, and yet he has a, a soft approach, which is nice. He's kind of like the Walter Cronkite for Canada. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so I, I trust Tony and um, look up to him and admire him. I guess he's warm and friendly and just sort of part of the living room. You know, you come in, you turn the TV on, and there he is. I just wondered if you would like to... Tony, that guy doesn't care. 